In this problem, we are given two vectors. The vector a is uh, 4i plus 7j, and the vector b is 5i minus 2j. If we wanted to just do a quick sketch of these, just to kind of see what they look like, uh, here's our x and y axes. So the vector a says I'm going to go over 4 in the i direction, 5, 6, 7 in the j direction. So it would look whatever, something like that. And the vector b would be 5 in the i direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 in the negative j direction. And so it would look something like that. And what we're going to be asked to do is to uh, calculate the uh, scalar product or the uh, dot product of this vector. So we want to find... Uh, a dot B. Uh, we also want to find the uh, cross product or the vector product A cross B. And maybe we'll find um, uh, the angle uh, between these vectors. So here's this angle here uh, between the vectors A and B. And uh, we'll call that angle phi. So that's the Greek letter phi, P-H-I, phi. So I'm going to write phi up here as the angle between the vectors. Okay, before we begin, uh, over here to the right, I've written a number of these equations down. Uh, so uh, the dot product or the scalar product, a dot b, is, is a b cosine phi. Uh, a and b now written like this have, are the magnitudes, and phi is the angle between the, vector, uh, between the vectors. And that's equal to the sum of the products of the like terms. So ax times bx plus ay times by. And if this was a three-dimensional vector, uh, plus az times bz. In this problem, there are no z components, so that would just be zero. And if you notice, what this is giving is a scalar, uh, it's an, and that's why it's called the scalar product. Uh, we can also multiply vectors using what is called the vector product or the cross product, so a cross b. And um, it's a little bit more complicated. You get uh, a vector resulting, so there's a, an i component, a j component, a k component for the x, y, z direction. Uh, also, the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the product of the magnitudes of each vector times the sine of the angle. So before uh, we go on here, I'll just say one other thing about the cross product, uh, and I'll just draw it out here. But uh, people, you may have, have uh, been introduced to uh, one method for solving cross products uh, is to kind of write a little matrixy thing where you write out uh, i, j, k across the top, but then you write uh, the uh, components of the a vector, a, x, a, y, a, z, and then the components of the b vector in this case, b, x, b, y, b, z, and you do kind of a determinant on it. So the i direction, you're gonna do, you're going to multiply, you're gonna look at this, this two by two here and you're going to multiply, cross multiply and subtract. So in the i direction you're going to get ay times bz minus az times by. And that's exactly what shows up in the uh, formula up here. The j direction is the tricky one because you have to put a negative sign in front and then you do the ax and bz and the az bx with the negative sign so it flips the direction. And then the k direction is back to normal ax by minus ay bx. Okay, so starting with uh, a dot b, I'm just going to use the formula over here for the like terms. So I'm going to say ax times bx plus ay by. So that's going to be uh, 4 times 5 plus 7 times negative 2. So it's going to be 20 minus 14, which is 6. We can also find the magnitudes 
of the individual vectors. So the magnitude of A is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So 4 squared plus 7 squared. And that ends up being 8.06. Then B, square root of 5 squared plus negative 2 squared. Again, the negative doesn't matter because you're squaring it, but uh, that ends up being 5.39. And so, for example, we can now say that uh, the dot product, which we said was equal to 6, it's going to equal the product of the magnitudes, AB, times the cosine of phi. So that's going to equal 8.06 times 5.39 times the cosine of phi. So the cosine of phi is 6 divided by 43.4, which equals 0 0.138. So phi is going to be the inverse cosine or the arc cosine of that, which is 82.1 degrees. So that was the angle uh, between those two vectors. So again, we have our uh, a vector was up there, B vector was somewhere this way, and that's our angle phi, 82.1 degrees. We'll do a quick uh, cross product example here. So A cross B, and I'll just use the formula up here. Uh, I guess I'll rewrite it out real quick. A, Y, B, Z, well there's no Z component, so that's going to be zero minus a z b y again there's no z components that's zero so there's no x component then we have a plus a z b x again no z component minus a x b z no z component so no z component in the j direction and we have a x b y so that's going to be uh, a x b y minus a y bx in the k direction. So we will have a k or z component. So it'll be 4.00 times negative 2.00 minus 7.00 times 5.00. And all of that is in the k direction. So we need to keep the unit vector there. So that's going to be negative 8 minus 35, which is negative 43.00, zero, technically, because uh, in the k direction, because now we're adding or subtracting, and with sig figs, uh, all of these have two digits to the right, and so we keep those two digits to the right. So technically, that would be written as negative 43.00. And one quick last thing here, if we Notice this last equation that involves the cross product, the magnitude of the cross product. Uh, we can just kind of verify that. So uh, for us, our vector is minus 43k. So the magnitude of that vector, it only has one, uh, one direction. So the magnitude for us of a cross b is just going to equal 43.00. And we can check uh, by multiplying a times b times the sine of the angle that we found just to verify this. So we can say, well, a, b sine phi is going to equal 8.06 times 5.39 times the sine of 82.1 degrees. And that's going to equal 43.0. So we have verified those two quantities are equal to each other, and so uh, we're verifying that equation is valid.